Hello everybody, my name is Code Blue and welcome back to another Code Blue tutorial. Now, I am sorry for the delay between the apology video and this actual video. Um, but anyway, in this video we're going to be making an actual add-on as we have not done that yet. And a lot of people get confused about how they are supposed to structure their add-on, how to make different entities work with each other, stuff like that. So today we're going to make a simple add-on where you have three entities, a cooker, a bag of dough, and some bread. Now the idea is, is you put the dough in the cooker, wait X minutes, and then out comes some bread. So it's very simple, but it should should push a lot of you in the right direction. So anyway, if you just go ahead and go to your Gary's Mod folder, then go into add-ons, and here we're going to go ahead and we're going to create an add-on. So we'll call this, um, we'll just call it cooking add-on, okay? And inside here, we're going to, of course, have our Lua folder. And inside here, we're going to have our entities folder, okay? Now, the reason for this is because, like I said, if we go back into here, it essentially emulates your Lua folder. So whatever's in your Lua folder, uh, whatever's in this Lua folder, sorry, essentially the game puts in this folder when the game starts up. Um, that's not exactly what happens, but you can think of it like that, okay? So now we have our Entities folder. If you have not watched the Entity tutorial yet, I advise you do. But what we're going to do is inside here, we're going to create a file. And actually, you know what? We'll do a folder. So it might make a bit more sense to you guys. And we'll call this um, Dough. Okay. Now, of course, you sh should name it something. Actually, yeah, we'll just name it Dough. You should name it something um, a lot better than that. But for now, it doesn't matter as we don't plan to release this. It's just just for this video. Um, so you're going to want your free files as usual. Your init, CL init, and shared. Again, if you haven't watched my entity tutorial, then I strongly advise you go do that right now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Sublime here. Where's my folder? There we go. And we're going to simply just drag this in here so that we can open up the folder. So now that we got that, um, the first thing we need to do is obviously code our entity. So I'm going to go to the client. We're going to say add CS Lua file, um, shared.lua. So we send the shared file to the client. And then, of course, on the server, we're going to include the shared file as well. The client is then going to include the shared file that it downloaded, um, et cetera, et cetera. You should already know this stuff. Um, but for now, we'll do ent draw, OK? Now, in end draw, this is of course client side now. We're just going to simply say self draw model. Now, I, I, I know I keep saying it, but really you guys should know what this is. If you don't, then you need to go back and watch my entities tutorial. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and grab a snippet from another entity as it's going to be much faster. Um, feel free to copy it if you like. Um, let me just clean this up real quick. Uh, whoops. There we go. Okay, so what we have here is a very basic entity, okay? Uh, we don't have shared yet, but we have client, okay, which just simply draws itself and the server when it initializes it, okay? We also need to do shared now. So, again, basic stuff. What we'll do is we'll set spawnable to true. Now, you don't normally need that if it's, uh, for example, dough is something that you'd normally, if it's dark up, you'd buy. Um, but for our example, we're going to be spawning it. Um, the last thing to do is, of course, the category, which I just spelled wrong. Um, and this is where it's going to show on the spawn menu. So we're just going to simply say cool cooking add-on. Okay, so that's that's what it'll appear under. So as long as we save everything now and we go ahead and we start up our Gary's mod, um, everything should work. Okay, so now that I've loaded in, I've gotten no errors. So if we go to the Entities tab, you should see your category name here. And then you should see the entity that you you called it, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's go here. I am sorry for the jitter, by the way. Um, that seems to be an issue with Bandicam right now. Uh, but anyway, so as you can see, we now have 
this rock here, okay? Now, the reason why this rock is here is, of course, because I have this stuff already in here, okay? So, I'm going to get rid of this. And um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find a model that we want to use. So, let's go to spawn list. Um, so, this is going to be dough. So, I guess for dough, we'll just have... Uh, hmm... Where's the rubbish? There you go. We'll just have this bag and we'll pretend that this is dough. So now that we have this, of course, we respawn our, um, our entity. There is our dough bag, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to be really lazy here. Um, I'm going to go back to my add-ons folder. Sorry, I was doing that off screen then. Um, and we're going to copy and paste this exact folder, except this time we're going to name this one bread, okay? And if we go into the shared of bread, we can just simply change this name to bread. And of course, when we set its model, we're going to want to set it to something different that looks like bread. Now, I don't believe there is any bread models um, in here. I know there is in TF2, though. Um, so we're going to pretend that bread is um, a watermelon. Okay, there you go. You bake dough and you get a watermelon. So let's go ahead and set the model to that. And normally you'll have to reload for this. Whenever you add a new entity, you, you typically have to reload for that entity to get loaded in. But there you go. So now if we go to our entity step, as you can see, we've got bread and we got dough now. So these are essentially props at the minute, even though they're not their own entity, okay? So now that we have these, the last step is to make the cooker. So let's go ahead and copy and paste one last time. And we'll call this the cooker. Um, and this time, we want to change the shade to cooker. And of course, we're going to want to change its model to... Uh, we'll just use the default cooker model for now. And there we are. So one more time, we're going to reload. And all of our entities should now be loaded, okay? And there's all of our entities right there. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to think, you know, what's the first step to actually cooking the watermelon? And that's, of course, putting the dough in the cooker, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the cooker and we're going to use function and start touch, okay? Now, what start touch is, it's a entity hook or a set hook. Um that gets called whenever something touches it, okay? And it normally passes an entity that that touched it, of course. So what we can do here, just to check, is we could say print and get class, okay? So what doing get class is going to do is it's going to return the name of that entity. So you see how this one's called dough, cook, and bread. If we call get class on them, it's going to return as a string the name of that entity. So if we go back into here now, you can see that in our code, it said dough twice. If we jump on it, because we're an entity, as you can see, it says that the player is touching it. If we get our bread here and put that on it, as you can see, it said that the bread touched it. So that's how we know what touches our entity, okay? So let's, um, let's go back into our code now. And what we're going to say is if the entity's class is equal to uh, dough, then what we're going to do is we're going to say ent remove. Okay, so what this would do is if we touch it with dough, then it's going to remove it. So if we touch it, there you go, it disappeared. And of course, this isn't going to happen with our watermelon because that's not dough. It's only going to happen with our dough. Now, that's cool and all, but of course, that's not quite what we want. Um, the next thing to do is actually make the cooker recognize that sorry let's get rid of this too that's not supposed to be there um, we got to make the cooker recognize that it actually is bacon so what we can do is when our entity starts up okay we can say self dot is bacon equals false okay now what is uh what doing self dot um essentially think of a table okay now this entity is a meta table so what you can do is you can store values on it. Now, of course, doing this uh, makes a unique value to each entity. 
but just so you know it, that is not networked so don't think that you can access this on the client because you can't it's only existent it only exists on the server unless you make it on the client um so what we can do is we can say self dot uh, is bacon is false so essentially when we spawn an instance of this cooker that cooker is going to tell itself that it is not bacon okay but now what we can say is you know if it's set to dough we can remove the dough and then we could say self dot is bacon equals true so that essentially tells our cooker that it is now bacon okay now what we can do as well is implement a think hook okay uh just by doing this okay now this is inefficient and you really shouldn't do this i'm only doing this to show you guys an example we can check if self dot is bacon is equal to true okay now if it is true then we can set set color of ourselves to a color of 25500 okay so that's red so what we're going to do is essentially say you know if we're bacon then set our color to red else if we're not bacon then set our color to a color of green so what that's going to do is you know if we're bacon red not bacon green okay so as you can see right now our entity is actually green okay we need to respawn it first of course but our entity is green it's kind of hard to see but you can see that it has a hint of green on it then if we get some dough and we put the dough into it as you can see it's now gone red so that's how um we know whether there's dough in there or not okay now of course we have an issue here if we are already bacon, we don't want to accept any more dough. So what we can do in this check is we can say, you know, if what's touching us is dough and we're not bacon. So as long as we're not already bacon dough, then we can accept dough. So now if we go ahead and we respawn it, we get some dough, put it in, it works. And now it's bacon. So if we get more dough, it's not going to work because it's currently bacon the last dough. Okay. So... Now, what's the next step? Of course, the next step is to count down until the dough is done. Okay, so there's actually a really easy way to do this. Um, you could use timers, but we're not actually going to use timers. Um, I did a video a while ago, I think, explaining what cure time was. And cure time is essentially the time since the server or your game has started. So what we're going to do, we're going to say south.finish bake time equals zero. Okay, we'll just... It doesn't matter what number you put here for now because we're not going to use it there. We're just initializing it. Now, whenever we accept a new dough, we want to say that it is bacon, but then we want to say that the finish bake time is equal to whatever the current time is, which could be, say, 10 seconds, plus however long we want it to take. So we could say take five seconds, okay? So um, essentially, cur time, let's say the server's been up for 20 seconds, okay? Cur time is going to be 20 seconds. If we check cur time a second later, of course, cur time is going to be 21 seconds. So by doing this, let's say the server's been up for 20 seconds, we're setting self finish bake time to 25. So just like if you had a clock that was, you know, 10 past one, and you said, I got to do something in 10 minutes, you would say 20 past one is when I need to do that thing. That's essentially all this is doing here. But what we're going to do is in our, in our think hook, we're going to say if self.finish well first thing we need to do is you know are we bacon <laughs> bless me um so we do are you bacon um are we bacon sorry and if we are bacon then what we want to do is we want to check if we're done so if self dot finish bake time is less than or equal to cur time then of course we're done okay now the reason why we do less than or equal to cur time is because cur time of course could be the exact same or more so this is essentially going to say when it's done and of course when it's done what we want to do is say self dot is bacon equals false because of course we finished bacon now we're no longer bacon so let's go ahead and get rid of that that's why the errors are there so now we have a cooker and we have some dough if we put the dough in and we wait four seconds and then it goes green because it finished bacon and now because it's finished whoops we can go ahead and we can put even more dough in there but again we can't put any more in there now not until 
it's finished baking again, and then we can put more in there. Now, the last step to this add-on is, of course, making it so that once we're done, once it's finished baking, it actually produces the bread, okay? So this is gonna be an easy part. So all we're done is now, now that we've finished baking, okay? We want to go ahead and we're going to say local bread equals ants.create. And we, we like, if you don't know what ants.create does, is it just creates an entity. That's all it is. Um, and then, of course, you get a reference to that entity back, which we store in bread. Now, something that we have to do is supply a class of the entity that we're creating, which in this case is bread, because that's the name of our entity up here. Okay. Then we need to set its position. So we're going to set its position whoops set pause to self get pause so that's going to get the position of the cooker plus a vector of zero um 25 zero now the reason why we add 25 is because we're gonna want to spawn it above the cooker not inside the cooker so by adding 25 up it's gonna add it above the cooker okay and then the last thing to do is say bread spawn so that actually spawns it so this is a mistake that a lot of people make. They create it, but they never spawn it, so they can't see it. It won't actually exist in the world until you call spawn, okay? Now, another thing you might get confused about is, of course, because this is in a think hook, some people might be thinking, well, that's going to create lots and lots of bread, when that's not the case. And the reason for that is because this if statement should only be true for one frame, because then is bacon is false, and, of course, it's never going to do this check again because this one's false. So anyway, let's go ahead and save this and see if it works. So let's spawn in a cooker and some dough. We go ahead and we put the dough in the cooker. We wait four seconds and hopefully some bread should pop out. Okay, so I might have got my X and Y mixed up there. Um, we're going to want to add that 25 to here. Not there. That's my bad. Sorry about that. But as you can see, it does work. Um, so let's go ahead and just try that one more time just to make sure it's all working. So we got to wait four seconds and then ta da, we got some bread. If you're wondering why that kind of popped out, um, it was because it was still actually spawned slightly inside the cooker. But there you go. That's a very, very basic, um, very basic cooking add on. Now, of course, you could expand on this, add different kinds of bread, different cooking time for different types. Um, and of course, you know, you can make it so that you can sell it, et cetera, et cetera. But I hope that to some of you, this was somewhat of a help. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, then leave a comment. And of course, I will try to get back to you. Um, I'm getting a lot more comments now, uh, but I do still reply to as many as I can. But I hope you enjoyed. Uh, more importantly, I hope you learned something. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.